The amount of claims against Destry Smith, Captain Destes, Destry, Destinate, whatever you want to call him, is astronomical. I posted a YouTube rant a couple of months ago, and you know, basically, if you haven't seen it, is just me talking about all of the problems I have with YouTube and how they are basically incentivizing the worst people on this platform instead of the best people on this platform. Let's just laugh at him now. <laughs> Destry Smith, rather known as Captain Destes, has been a popular YouTuber for the past decade. Destry's rise to fame began with his best friend and YouTube partner Nate Owens, rather known as Ahoy NATO, on YouTube and other social media. Together, they had a channel called Des and Nate where they would make tons of comedic vlogs. Now, looking back on all of the times that I've covered people in these types of situations, I could say that this is the first time that I think I have ever covered a YouTuber or an influencer who happened to be one of my favorite YouTubers growing up as a kid. While I've outgrown their random and quirky humor over the years, looking back on their channels has been somewhat of a positive nostalgia for me for such a long time. At least until now when a lot of things coming in the context kind of distort and ruin those good memories. Des and Nate were among some of the most popular faces of the emo and scene kid days. They were popular on websites like MySpace and YouTube and were among one of the scene kings, I guess you could call them. I I know there were scene queens, and the reason I even found out about Des and Nate was from a scene queen called Lita Monster Bunny, who dated Nate back in the day. That introduced me to their channel, and the three of them were some of my favorite influencers of all time back when I was maybe 15 years old. Looking back on videos like Des and Nate's, however, I found something very interesting that does happen to give me some hindsight. Like, looking back on it now, it's like, hmm. That should have been a red flag. You see, Des and Nate's audience was definitely around the ages of 12 to 17 years old. And in a lot of their videos, more specifically Destry's videos, he would make a lot of really inappropriate jokes. Inappropriate jokes that maybe shouldn't have been for a target audience of teenagers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the screeching sequel. He's actually using these inappropriate situations in his videos to lure in teenage followers and and making that type of language comfortable and okay with them for when he starts talking to them personally. I love you. <laughs> I just think that the more you say it to someone else, the more you just rock in life. One last time. I love you. Oh, you didn't hear me? I love you. <laughs> what a creep. No, but I'm serious. You can seriously have like 20 friends over right now, and I really don't care about them. I care about you. I want your babies. What? I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed. It's totally not me. That's neither here nor there. It's right here. I just wanted you to know that I love you. If you're ever down in the world, you have me. If your boyfriend hates you, if your girlfriend hates you, if a squirrel that you randomly see on the street is just like, I hate you, then you have me. That's all you need. Over the past week, many have come forward sharing their experiences with Destry. This started with a user on TikTok called Your Girl Adri, which is the TikTok you're seeing right now without any of the music. She claims that as a teenager, she idolized Destry and that he used this to his advantage, so to speak. According to Adri, this TikTok was removed by Destry for bullying. So she is actually working on her own YouTube video compiling tons and tons of claims made by others to help spread the word about Destry's actions. At the time of recording, Recording this, that video has not been posted, but if and when it is, I will have it listed in the description below, along with other videos we shall be discussing today. Also, a video from Ready to Glare, who covered this topic a few days ago, who does a great job at summarizing Audrey's story even more. After Audrey's video, tons of people have come forward with their own stories on Destry. Claims of him cheating on previous partners, going after underage girls, and manipulating several different friends for his own personal gain. Claims were made that he collected inappropriate photos from teenage girls, attempted to fly minors out to sleep with him, which if true is considered grooming by the way, and also slept with girls who were not only under the age of 18, but apparently some being under the age of 16 as well, which if you don't know, some states consider 16 years old to be the age of consent, so if true, this would not be legal in any 
state. After the information began to surface and more people came out with their stories, Destry privated all of his social media, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, you name it. And people speculated that this was so he could delete incriminating evidence on his profiles. To test that theory, I decided to look up his social blade for his YouTube channel, and sure enough, the day after these claims began, he deleted over 1.2 million views worth of content off of his YouTube channel. At the time of recording this video, he has yet to make any public statements. So just to confirm to anyone wondering, um, when I was 13, I discovered Destry, or I was probably 12, and when I was 13, I started messaging him on Twitter, and he started replying. And we exchanged like flirty messages, and then I sent him like nudes and stuff, like pictures of my butt. And then I eventually, like a month later, I think I told him, I, I feel bad, like I'm actually only f uh, 13 or 14, I think I lied and said I was 14, but still, it doesn't matter if I was 13, 14, or 15. Disgusting for a 20 year old man a 20 year old man to receive nudes from a teenage girl not an 18 year old girl a child and to offer to fly me out to stay with him to have sex with him i wasn't gonna be there to play jenga we ended up talking pretty much every day for a while um and i was young and naive so i thought that i was special to him i thought we were like on our way to boyfriend girlfriend and i had fantasies like I had watched him for so long that I would like stare at his face and just be like, oh my god, I want to marry him, I want to be with him, I want to be like the one girl that's so special that he chooses me and like we live happily ever after together. Anyways, so I started to think that this is where this was going. No. Because I went on his Twitter and his likes and I started finding other girls that were making it seem like he was in a relationship with them. And upon further investigation and talking to these girls, they were like, oh yeah, he went to a carnival with me and kissed me on the Ferris wheel just last week. And they were 15 year old girls. Oh my god, it's so disgusting. And now listen, before you say to Mimi, you're going to believe all of these claims without any proof at all. First of all, we'll get there. And secondly, when I was researching for this video, I actually found this page by accident. It's a website called Guru Gossiper, and this is a thread on that website from 2014, seven years ago. On this forum are transcripts from what is believed to be one of Nathan's ex-girlfriends. Again, Nathan is Destry's ex-friend, so this is the the ex-girlfriend of Destry's ex-friend. I know, that's a lot to handle. But there is one quote that stood out to me in particular. Destry is intelligent and very talented, but very manipulative, and makes sure he gets what he wants and things go his way. He has never given Nathan any money from Destinate merch or the channel, and keeps it all to himself so he is doing really well money-wise, and he also has a long history of cheating, but he has been pretty good for the most part with his current girlfriend. But apparently, he has two Facebook's one to talk to other girls with, so who knows, really. This actually correlates with Nathan's statements very, very well, and we're going to get into those in just a moment. Now, for each quote on this forum, it has a URL cited above it. So I tried to plug the URLs into my search bar to see if they're still active, and sadly, they seem to be deleted. So take this with a grain of salt. However, the fact that these claims were made seven years ago on a forum that surprisingly lines up perfectly to the claims being shared now, unless somebody has a time machine, I don't know if I'd feel confident in calling that a coincidence. If you've been following my most recent videos lately, then you know what I'm about to say next. But wait, there's more. This same forum also shares a video from a channel called Pop Trigger, where in 2014, they made a video discussing YouTubers taking advantage of their young followers. And they provided a list of popular YouTubers who have allegedly done this. Guess whose name happens to be on that list? So here's some people on the list, and I'm not familiar with all of them, so if I say their name wrong, just let me know. There is Tom Milsom, Mike Lombardo, Alex Day, Ed Bland, Tom McLean, Josh McKayo, Kelly Montoyo, Danny Cooper, Alex Carpenter, Adam Roach, Luke Conard, Corey Fidel, Travis Neumeyer, Alex Odom, Gregory Jackson, Stephen Purcell, Brian Bubian, Harry Gilliott, Ricky Richard, Sam Pepper, Jason Neal Johnson, Destry Smith, King Russell. And these are people where there are a number of examples and complaints and anonymous uh, video responses that have been posted saying that this happened to me, this happened to me, that happened to me, and uh, people just trying to make it known and speak forward so this can 
not continue to go on. And to remind you, this was in 2014. That is seven years ago. And on the same thread, there's even more claims against Destry. This post was from 2015, where the poster claims Destry started hanging out with her after they met at a concert, and he began to check her out, and later had a friend throw insults at her after he lost interest in her. Another post from 2014 claims that even back then, people knew that he would go after underage girls, and that he would even flirt with them publicly on his social media. Now, every time a large group of people come out against a public figure with their experiences, people love to throw around the, they're just doing this for clout, they're doing it for money, they're doing it for attention. Why did you wait so long to say anything? This is a trend just to cancel someone. This literally proves that people were talking about this years ago. It's just that nobody was listening. I'm adding these quotes in the proof that this isn't just some sort of trend. These aren't just claims people are making up because it's popular to talk about right now. These claims have been going on for years. To talk a bit about my own experience, I've been friends with Destry since 2003, and I stopped being friends with him in 2017. So basically, I've known him for 14 years. So this story involves me, Destry, his girlfriend at the time, Amber, and uh, Evie Davis. So in 2017, I became friends with Evie, and shortly after that, I told Destry that I was interested in dating her. And what Destry had told me was that he broke up with his girlfriend Amber and was already dating Evie. And he was telling his girlfriend Amber at the time that the only reason he was talking to Evie was because he wanted to hook her up with me. Long story short, I contacted Amber, who was out of state visiting her parents, and I asked her how her and Destry were doing. She told me that he was telling her that he missed her and that he couldn't wait for her to come home. And that's when his whole web of lies came crumbling down. As for the other things that he's done, I've met a handful of people who have shared their experiences with me. And I think that the sad and scary thing is, is that we've probably only scratched the surface of the things that he's done. Anyways, after all that happened, I was just so disgusted by all of the lying and the cheating that I have not spoken a single word to Destry since. I also want to say that my heart goes out to all the people who have been affected by him. Trust me, I know how it feels. Leaving my best friend of 14 years was probably one of the hardest things I had to do, but it was a choice I had to make to be in integrity with myself. He also made this statement on Twitter. Where do I even begin? With this post, my intention is to convey my experience the best way I can without being misunderstood. I suppose I'll start by doing my best to condense this into a Twitter post. For those who don't know, I am Nathan Owens, a Hoy NATO, and I was friends with Destry for a large portion of my life, 14 years, and the counterpart of the Destinate channel. I have likely the most experience being around Destry and seeing things he's done, not only firsthand being an unaware victim of his manipulation, but also witnessing him mistreating and lying to people closest to him. Also, anyone who he can manipulate further into his own agenda without consideration of how it would negatively affect others. It took a lot of learning on my part to understand how I was being mistreated, and for a long time I was under the influence of his manipulation. So much so that I didn't question when I didn't receive any compensation for posting videos on the Destinate channel, or when he would receive 100% of profit from my merch that I either designed solely, helped to design, or even a poster that was literally just a picture of me. He can convinced me that it was cool the way he mistreated people, and he fed me lies about a perfect future so that I wouldn't ever want to question him for fear of losing out on the life I wanted. Destry would do things like show me pictures of random people sending him nudes so that way I would see how desirable he is and how he can get away with so much if he wanted, and even would have me transfer huge amounts of money from his PayPal to his bank so that I could see how much money he was making. It makes me sick to think about how I couldn't see how wrong the things he has done were, but that's why he attacks the people he does. People People who don't question and people who are submissive and easy to manipulate. It took this long for me to be strong enough to come forward, and for that, I'm sorry, because I know he has been able to hurt so many people in that time. I wish I could have been stronger. I hope I can be the strong person now that I wish I could have been back then. Anytime I would find out he was cheating on a girlfriend, I would tell them because the amount of guilt I would have knowing that would overwhelm me. That led to him telling many people that I would steal his girls, but it was literally just me being a good person and he wanted to be able to lie, cheat, and manipulate 
fight. And so as long as I knew what was going on, he would not be able to do that. So he got very good at hiding it from me. So much so that for six years, I thought he was being loyal to his girlfriend, only to find out now that in 2021, that the entire time he had been getting nudes from other girls and flirting with countless people, including underage girls. I can't help but feel as the person who was closest to him that I should have come forward sooner and been a voice for all of those people who had been hurt by him. And for that, I am so sorry. I know that I, like many others, were in the dark about so much. I hope that by coming forward now, being a source of validation for the victims of his actions, I can feel some peace. I encourage anyone who has contact with him to come forward as not to feel the guilt of wishing they had done more, but also to add to the timeline so that we could put the pieces together of what has really happened. Because there are so many people who are in the dark and are in the same place that I was, and so many others have been being unaware of all of this. Lastly, I want to express that the people who have grown up with us and relied on us to get through the hard days should not feel like they were lied to. Those feelings of happiness and comfort were real. It's just that Destry put on a mask and appeared to be a person worth letting in. Don't let a portion of your life feel like a lie, because that's only allowing him to do even more damage. That's something I had to come to terms with, and I don't want people to feel like they have wasted their lives. It's not your fault that you were deceived. The best thing we can do is move forward with our best selves and protect future people from having to go through the things we have by showing what red flags to look out for. I'm not here to dwell on the past. I'm here to address Destry's behavior to hopefully protect people from going through the pain and hardship I've experienced. Nathan's tweet was actually a quote tweet of Lee Heighton Stollard, otherwise known as at yeah sure I guess on Twitter, which states my feelings on Destry. There's so many stories and things I can share about Destry Smith. I spent three years with him thinking that he was my best friend. I had no idea the level of manipulation he's held over his friends or his entire fan base. There's a lot more that can be said, but this stuff I feel is most important. I know for a fact that Destry keeps folders on tons of videos and pictures of his exes or any girl that has ever sent him nudes. He also used to open his Snapchat and brag to me about the few hundred unopened snaps he had pending and that they were all nudes. Destry was an idol of mine when I was 13. I knew exactly what it feels like to grow up idolizing him and thinking he was a voice for young alternative kids that didn't have many people on their side. I'm incredibly sorry to any victim that might be triggered by this. Please encourage victims to speak out if they're comfortable and ready to talk about their story with Destry. So if this is true, if what this person is saying is correct and honest, what that means is that Destry could possibly have folders of his ex-girlfriend's inappropriate photos. If some of those were minors, that means he could have allegedly be holding CP. That's like when Chris Ila played that really creepy guy on the show You, and then later on we found out that Chris Ila himself was also a creep. But in the show, not in real life, the real life Chris Ila was just a creep with minors. In the show, he would collect pictures of underage girls, and that's literally what this person is claiming that Destry is doing. After this post was made, several other people came forward with their statements and their experiences as well, both on TikTok and on Twitter. I hope I say this correctly, but Ahoya Lena posted on Twitter, Destry Smith approached me and my best friend when we were 14 years old on MySpace. He was graduating high school and we were still in middle school. As kids, we thought it was so cool and older popular scene guy thought we were fun and cute. This was when YouTube was becoming really popular. So this was something really exciting for us. He was extremely interested in my best friend, keeping her name private, and I was always trying to be his friend too. I had a huge crush on Nathan, his best friend, so I just awkwardly flirted on the sidelines. He pressured Nathan into trying things with me, but I could always tell Nathan wasn't into it or me. Looking back on it, most likely it was because he knew that it was wrong. I always tried to be friends with Destry, but he always had to try and make things and would try to get me to convince my best friend to send him nude photos and would say that if I couldn't get her to, that I had to. We never knew this wasn't okay for him to do. We were children. He turned me and my best friend against other girls and now looking back on it, it was because he didn't want us to know he was doing the same thing with these other girls. He told me about all of his exes and how they were all obsessed with him, when in reality, it was because he was still involved with them. He strung along so many girls who are terrific and beautiful people who didn't deserve any of the bullshit 
girls. Destry told me he had a hard drive of nudes he kept that girls sent him. So to note, we have now a second person claiming that he has some sort of files with nude images on them, or at least he had them, and that he planned on using them against his ex-girlfriends. He would always try to pressure my best friend into sleeping with him as well as many other things, and he tried to do the same with me eventually. One time, I remember he tried to force a threesome on me with Nathan and him. I am almost positive Nathan had no idea, and I had no idea what was even going on. It didn't get anywhere, and I was scared and freaked out, so I left. He would always try to tell me that him and my best friend weren't talking and would say, don't you want me all to yourself? Don't think about her. And then would make out with me and try to make me feel bad for not wanting to do anything with him. He tried to turn me against my best friend to be with him, but I never gave in, so he dropped me. I don't know how or when all of this ended with him, but I'm grateful that it did. He's a he took advantage of minors, and I'm not surprised this behavior continued on. I'm so sorry to all the other people who have gone through his manipulation and torture. I wish I could have come out with it earlier, but honestly, I buried it deep inside because I knew it was too painful to think about. You are not alone. Another person on Twitter states, For anyone who still believes Destry Smith is a good person, the amount of times I had to remind him of his now ex-girlfriend is disgusting. Also, making up a story about Nathan, quote, wanting me to somehow win me over makes no sense. And in this tweet, she provides screenshot. Fine, fine, I just have to admit my seduction skills will never work on you. Why would anyone want to seduce me? I'm such a loser face. Laughing emoji. Uh, because you're gorgeous. Ha. Huh. Aw, thanks, man. Of course. Have you made the suggestion of going on holiday to Amber yet? Eh, I don't really have the funds. Hopefully, they can give you some contacts and you can take it from there. Yeah, that would be cool. Either way, I'm sure I'll be okay. But thanks, future wife. Well, I figured you'd earn a load more from voice acting than Patreon. On. And I have relatives in the production slash acting industry. May as well use that to my advantage. And poor Amber, isn't she your future wife? Actually, no. I think I'd die. I thought star Destry could handle anything. If you can't handle rocks, then I don't know if this'll work, mate. Also, doesn't Amber get any of that star action? She is your lover, after all. She deserves a slice of the Destry pie. If I was single, would you actually let me hit on you? Haha. <laughs> it's all good, though. Nathan has been on a lot, and Tim and the others. Oh, that's good. Is Nathan trying to bone you as much? And you not being on just means you're doing something productive or better with your time. What? Is he flirting? Haha. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't think so. I don't think he's interested, man. Another person by the name of Shannon Taylor states, I want to keep this as straight to the point as possible. I was supposed to be flying across country to meet and stay with Destry Smith in less than a week. This has been the plan for well over a month and we have been talking for several more months prior. While a part of the trip was dedicated to working on a song, we had been flirting for quite some time and I'd expressed my clear romantic interest in seeing where our relationship went when I got there in person and it was reciprocated. About a week ago, he let me know he was seeing someone else but assured me that this didn't change anything between us and hoped I still wanted to come. I've spent the last several days expressing to him how upset I am over the fact that he he led me on and his response has been to gaslight me by essentially saying this was all one-sided and in my head. I have been completely panicking trying to decide if I should get on the plane and go anyway despite my hurt feelings and then this all happened. Given that I am scheduled to fly out there on the 20th and that my story corroborates the others, I feel obligated to speak up. I want to say a big thank you to all of the girls who spoke up yesterday. While I am completely in shock right now, you guys have saved me from unforeseen amounts of heartache and pain. I can't thank you enough for being so brave and speaking out. Who knows what my future would have looked like otherwise. And to Destry, if you haven't come to this conclusion yet, no, I'm obviously not coming. When everyone in your life has the same complaint, perhaps there's some validity to them. I wish you no ill will, but please take a good hard look in the mirror and examine how you treat people. Somebody else who was allegedly one of Destry's friends came out stating, I was close friends with Destry Smith, Captain Destes, for nearly three years. In that time, I witnessed and experienced countless examples of manipulation both towards myself, the friend group, his fans, and the woman in his life. For a TLDR, I stand with anyone coming forward with their stories. To start, working with Destry, he would consistently joke that if he were to ever be Me too he would just ignore it and let it pass, much like he has been doing as of February 11th, 2021, where he has privated his social media and is heavily moderating his comments, tweets, and posts, speaking negatively about him, even on YouTube. I cut communication with him after watching his psychological 
of my roommate come to a head after a year plus. Not only was he consistently gaslighting and cheating on her, but he led a misinformation campaign in both my house and our friend group turning us against each other and alienating us from each other. Speaking about old friends and partners as if they were crazy, out to get him or a danger to us. Just so we would be predisposed to not believing them when they would attempt to warn us about the dangers of destry. This includes, but is not limited to, potential with minors cheating, hitting on, and pursuing friends, significant others, stealing content ideas, hacking, slander, the list goes on. In speaking with survivors of Destry's antics, I was able to see nearly identical parallels between the patterns I saw in his actions towards women and the way they described their time involved with him. This spans over a decade, more likely since the inception of his YouTube channel. Seeing this outpouring of allegations over the last 24 hours has given me enough confidence to finally post this. He is not a good person. Person. He has not and will not change. I welcome any survivors to please share their stories on this thread, on TikTok, on YouTube, etc. This is not for clout. This is not just to cancel someone. This is to save anyone else who may be a potential or current victim or survivor of Destry Smith or Captain Destus. Stay safe, stay well, Sweever. The amount of people who have come forward in just the span of a few days is so high that I can't even go through every single claim made against him in this one video. We will be here for so long. At this point, they're mostly just accusations. However, one thing I will mention is that the second that these accusations came out, the second that these claims began against Destry, he went private on all of his accounts. He went private on Twitter, he went private on Instagram, and he went private on TikTok. A lot of people were speculating that he was going private to delete or remove a lot of his content that could be incriminating evidence to point to the fact that these girls are telling the truth. So I did a little investigating and thought, well, you know what, if he's deleting content on his other social media and that's why he's going private, maybe he deleted some things off of his YouTube as well. And sure enough, I went on to his social blade and on February 12th, it looks like he deleted over 1.2 million views worth of content. Now, for somebody as popular as Destry, that can be maybe one, two, or three videos. For me personally, somebody who is going to private all of their content and delete a lot of their content just seems very suspicious to me after these accusations have come out. At this point in time, he has not made a statement. He has not said anything. He is silent right now. If anybody has any more information, please come forward with your stories, with your statements. It is so important to give people a voice on this. And if you have any evidence of him asking you for inappropriate photos while you are under the age of consent in your area, please consider trying to report that to the authorities. Not every state has a statute of limitations. Check your state's regulations, check your local authorities, and research how to contact the appropriate people. Make sure that even if you come forward, if you have evidence of any kind that he has tried to solicit inappropriate photos of you as a child, take that to your authorities and see what they can do. Once again, I would like to mention that I am planning on making a few videos here and there that are a little bit more lighthearted, even if they're just more trivial topics, more drama-related content, if you will. Maybe even do like story times or something. I don't know, anything that breaks this up as like a palate cleanser, if you will. So let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts on this situation in general. By the end of the week, I know I mentioned this in my last video, I would like to have my Patreon only video up complaining for a long period of time about Twitter. I didn't forget about that. That's gonna be up. And I'm going to start working on some more Patreon only content coming up in the future. So if you're interested in that, check that out below. I'm going to also start trying to do some live streams more. Thank you so very, very much for watching. If you made it to the end, of this video. I really, really appreciate it. And especially thank you to my supporters on Patreon, especially Louis, Miss Tanisha, Michelle, and Trust Out. You guys are amazing, and I really, really appreciate your support. Thank you so very, very, very much from the bottom of my heart. And until next time, I will see you all later. Hey, Snuggy Woo Woo. Hello, handsome. I don't know if you can see him, but... <laughs> Hello. Hi, sweetheart.